Hello, good morning, good evening, wherever you are. Thanks for waiting. My name is Kiara from UIC International Academy. It is so wonderful to see all of you today here and welcome to our IC Ideas series webinar. Ideas make outstanding. IC Ideas is a serious nonprofit international education webinar devoted to spreading ideas held by UIC International Academy. Cutting edge knowledge and insights in different industries and areas will be presented by world leading a renowned professor of USC. Last Friday, we have learned much about careers in nutrition and dietetics, US and abroad. Most of our audience seems really interested in this area. So today, our speakers will give us an information session for USC nutrition graduate degree programs to let us know more. Before the session, please allow me to go through some introduction about our guest speakers today. Welcome, Dr. Kruster, the Associate Clinical Professor of Gentology and Pediatrics in U.S. Lerner Davis School of Gentology, where she directs the Master of Science in Nutrition, Health Span, and Longevity program. She also holds appointments as Assistant Clinical Professor in Tech School of Medicine of USC. Dr. Cruz's areas of expertise include obesity prevention and intervention, development disabilities, and chronic illness, public health and nutrition education, nutrition and health literacy, health system, and healthcare access. In U.S. Leonard Davis School of Gentology, she is leading the startup of a distance master's degree coordinated program in nutrition, health span, and longevity. This program is accreditation eligible through the Accreditation Council on Education in Nutrition and Dietetics. At the same time, doctor has been a practicing registered dietitian since 1982. And welcome May, the Director of International Student Initiatives and Director of Information Technology at U.S. Learning Davis School of Gentology. And welcome Stephen, the Mission Counselor at U.S. Learning Davis School of Gentology. And today we also have Ananai who will share her insights about nutrition. Welcome Joy Yi Zhang, who has graduated from our coordinated program in 2018 and stayed in U.S. working as a dietitian. Welcome them and thanks so much for joining us today. And dear audiences, please know that we will have the Q&A part of the speech. You can enter in your questions at any time in the Q&A box located at the bottom screen. We'll try to get to as many questions as we can at the end of speech. Okay, without further ado, please join me in welcoming our speakers today. May please. Hi, Stephen. 大家好, my name is Stephen. I'm an admission counselor here at the USC Leonard Davis School of Gerontology. If you have any questions after this program about the application process, any other programs at our school, or any questions in general about our school, please feel free to reach out to me and I'd be more than happy to answer them for you. I will also leave my name in the chat. And at this time, I would like to hand it over to Dr. Kreitzer. Great, thank you so much. I'm happy to be with all of you to, to this evening for me. Um, I would like to share with you a little bit of information uh, enough just to kind of get your interest in some programs that we are offering within the U.S. Leonard Davis School. And we have a program that we've had in place for about nine years that uh, Joy, who you'll meet in a little bit, uh, graduated from and became a registered dietitian nutritionist. And just this year, we've added three new degree programs. So I'm gonna go pretty quickly through those three new programs and help you understand what what it is that we're offering. And I'd like to spend more time on questions and answers just so that we can be sure and answer your questions. So when we talk about gerontology, uh, we talk about studying the process of aging and 
We have many esteemed biologists within the Leonard Davis School who are internationally known for the research they do looking at how cells age, how animals age, and how humans age. And nutrition fits right in with that because we know that eating a healthy diet, maintaining a healthy weight and a healthy lifestyle can give you additional years of life um, through that process. So we look at the aging process from birth to death and even before if we look at pregnant women and how well they're eating while they're pregnant. Next slide. So in the Leonard Davis School, we have a number of different programs. I'm gonna focus on the programs that are listed in blue. We have undergraduate programs at the bachelor's level. We have master's degree programs at the master's of arts and master's of science level. And we, uh, also have a graduate certificate in gerontology, as well as two PhD programs, one looking at the biology of aging, the aging process, and one a PhD in gerontology. Um, I'm going to go through each of these four master's degree programs that are listed. Before I go to the next slide, there is overlap with all four of these programs. Some of the same courses that you'll do depending on which program that you're in, all with a different end point. Uh, and we've thought about it intentionally with who are individuals out there that need master's degrees and would benefit? And what are the jobs that will hire these individuals into positions? Because, right, that's ultimately our goal is to get jobs. So next slide. Uh, and then the next slide. These are the four programs that we'll talk about. So the first program that's listed here is the program that we've had the longest for about nine years. We have our eighth group of students that is starting the program uh, in a couple weeks. And we've had uh, six groups of students that have already graduated. Uh, we just did our calculations and 95% of those who have completed our program have sat for the registered dietitian exam and have passed the exam. So we're really excited about that. Um, for this program, it is a US-based program. Our accreditation body is the Accreditation Council for Education and Nutrition and Dietetics, or ASCEND. And they are very specific about what we need to teach, what st students need to learn, and um, this program, different from the other programs, is that it includes a thousand hours of internship. And that too is required by Ascend in order to graduate and sit for the RDN exam. Um, it is a two year full time program. It's pretty intense, 44 units. Um, for international students, we would only want you and we require that you participate in the program um, on campus. Um, we don't offer for international students to do the program online. Um, there are 11 prerequisites that are required before you can be accepted or considered for this program. And um, Stephen can help you more with that, this information we have on our website. Um, we do require that um, those that finished an undergrad dietetics or a didactic program in dietetics, that they provide a verification statement that they have finished that program. We also require, and that's just for those that are doing that in place of the list of prerequisites. Um, and if we have time, Peter, I see your question that popped up, we can pull up that, uh, that template. Um, it, it's quite lengthy. And I will say that I have recorded an overview of this program can be found on our website and it goes through in much more detail than I'm gonna do tonight for this particular program. Um, once individuals have finished this program and have graduated, they're able to sit and take the registration exam to become a registered dietitian through the Commission on Dietetic Registration in the US. And, um, you know, not accepted by, uh, 
Some countries do accept that designation that the US offers, not all, which is why the next degree program, next slide, that I'm gonna roll right into. And I think I'll skip this. Um, this you have in your, the list of courses you have in your PowerPoint, it's all the courses that are part of the program. Um, if you can, I kind of want to fast forward, Stephen, to the Masters of Arts in Nutrition and Dietetics. I probably should have put it in that order. Uh, not that one. So go back. Go back. One more. There you go. Uh, one more forward. Sorry. Okay. So the new one of our new three programs is a Master's of Science in Lifespan Nutrition and Dietetics. This program, this degree program, really is a mirror of the coordinated program that's 48 units. The only difference between the two classes is there's fewer prerequisites that we're requiring. We've included a food science course as part of the 38 units. And we have only three to 400 hours of internship, not a thousand. Um, our, our real impetus for putting this program together is we have had international students who don't need to pass the US RDN exam and don't need the level of internship hours that the US system requires, um, but do need a master's degree in nutrition and dietetics. So this particular program, you would receive a master's of science in lifespan nutrition and dietetics. You would have the same courses that we offer in our coordinated program, and you would then be able to submit for positions in your home country um, if you chose to go um, outside of the U.S. or, or you know, to another country um, and could potentially take the RD exam there. I'm told for those of you that are that are from China, that there is an RDN exam that with receipt of this degree, you would be eligible to take the dietetics exam in China um, after receiving this degree. So this particular degree, one and a half years full-time is pretty fast. I would suggest probably more going at the pace of maybe two years would be a little more realistic to get through the classes that are offered. The prerequisites that you see listed there are the same prerequisites that we require for our coordinated program. Um, there are fewer because our credentialing agency in the US requires that we have certain prerequisites that individuals come in with. Um, so when we get to Q&A, if I need to make this more clear, the difference between the coordinated program that's a master's of science and this master's of science in lifespan nutrition and dietetics, it really was designed for those that don't need to sit for the RDN exam and potentially those that wanna work in the US as a certified dietary manager or want to run a nutrition program and don't need the RDN. Um, let's finish these three slides, uh, Stephen, so go to the next slide. So this program, again, I told you classes are similar to our coordinated program. This is the list of classes. We really don't have electives because all of these classes are critical to preparing you for a career in nutrition and dietetics. So they're planned out for you in advance. We know which ones need to be taken when um, because they each build on one another. Um, so that is the list of courses. Next slide. And uh, again, this is designed for inter individuals interested in practice outside of the US, uh, careers as dietary managers, or those that may work in the field of health span longevity where the RDN is not, not required, um, and careers in health and wellness as a nutrition program director, or even a nutrition services supervisor in a healthcare facility. 
Um, I have pictures that I've embedded throughout. This is a group of students that presented their research uh, that they did while in the program at a professional conference. And uh, it's just a picture of us standing by our poster, uh, by the posters of uh, at least a few of the students that you see pictured there. So let's go back, let's go forward. Um, and then we'll go back to the MA, Stephen, at the end. So the the third master's degree that I want to talk about is a master's of science in nutritional science. And we have had interest from students that um, potentially maybe any of you may be a practicing dietitian in your home country and you're just seeking to have that additional master's degree in nutritional sciences and you want to come do a master's degree with us. For that audience, we assume that you've already completed those courses that you saw listed in the slide before last, that you've had medical nutrition therapy, you've had uh, micronutrients, macronutrients, you've taken food science, food service management. This MSNS really is geared to those who are either working as a dietitian or um, have received a bachelor's degree in nutrition and dietetics and want to get a, a master's degree and potentially apply for an internship. Any of you that are on this call that have completed in the US, it's called a didactic program in dietetics or a DPD program. And it often is at the undergraduate level. For someone with a DPD, this would be the master's degree for you if you're seeking to sit for the RDN exam, you would also need to apply for a dietetic internship outside of USC, potentially doing it concurrently while you're working on this master's of science in nutritional science. Um, so we're just trying to find new opportunities for students that have unique need, needs without requiring you to take courses that you've already had at the undergrad level. Next slide. Um, so you can see with this particular degree, um, the only um, really in-depth nutrition class is JARO 560, which looks at micronutrients, so vitamins and minerals and their role in health and longevity. Um, one of our geriatricians teaches JARO 564, looking at multiple chronic conditions in older adults and nutrition implications. Um, all of our students in our coordinated program do a capstone project. And with this particular degree, we will offer again the capstone research. Um, I'm hoping Joy can tell you what her capstone project was um, and how it was published or presented. Um, and we also have an international course that is held in Italy every summer, and that's JARO 498, Nutrition, Genes, Longevity, and Disease with Dr. Walter Longo, who is very well known internationally is a biologist who has studied aging and the role of diet with aging. It's You're not required to go to Italy. You're encouraged to go to Italy. We do offer it on campus for those who choose to not travel to Italy um, can actually complete that course online. Uh, next slide. Uh, with this particular degree, again, if a student did an undergrad DPD and is doing this degree along with applying for internship programs, um, they, once they finish the degree and take the, and do their internship, could sit for the exam. Um, and in this group, we also anticipate we will get individuals that are already practicing as a dietitian, um, so career op opportunities opportunities to continue doing what they're doing or even look for promotions or, or work in a different field. Um, let's go back now to the Masters of Arts. So we have uh, our fourth and final degree program. Really, the impetus for this in our Leonard Davis School of Gerontology we, and as people my age and older are retiring, we are seeing older adults that are healthy and living into 
retirement communities where they're wanting to eat healthy, they're wanting to be active, and um, we are wanting to really train future leaders working with our senior communities that can promote longevity and the role of nutrition and longevity. And this Masters of Arts in Food Service Management would really will prepare an individual who will spend likely more of their time working in a senior community or a hospital or a setting where they are not only doing some clinical nutrition work, but more so managing the food service department, managing the employees in the food service department, planning the menus, planning food events and those kinds of things. And we're seeing here, especially in Southern California, that many of our senior communities are wanting to hire certified dietary managers that have passed the credentialing exam for certification as a dietary manager or CDM is the is the credential. Um, and thus, this program really is focused on that. It's a 32 unit program. There are no prerequisites. This program for someone who, um, and maybe it's a US term as a foodie, someone who really enjoys food, enjoys preparing food and eating food and talking about food and taking pictures of food um, and sees themselves in a role where they are surrounded in this area of food. Um, this degree program would really prepare you for that. It has less emphasis on the science of aging, um, thus we're not requiring biochemistry, microbiology. Um, we're teaching you nutrition, but more so we're teaching you food service management and uh, cultural foods and the role of foods in terms of culture and health. Um, next slide. Uh, with this program, again, the classes are a little bit different. We want to prepare you to work with older adults. So Jero 500 looking at um, understanding aging and what we're seeing uh, across the world in this area of aging, um, communicating nutrition and health I teach. And it's how do you help people change behavior? How do you educate people on the basics of nutrition? Um, food production, food service management is more more looking at the food service side. Um, we have a class that looks at preventing chronic disease through nutrition, fat, physical activity, and lifestyle. Again, taught by our geriatrician to really look at the role of nutrition and what are the chronic diseases that we need to be aware of. Uh, some classes on revenue management, as well as um, food service and senior living. Um, we do have some internship hours with this degree, um, somewhere between three and 400 hours of a field practicum that we would set you up with, hopefully in a senior community to gain some skills in that area. And the research seminar in aging is really talking more about this area of practice. So um, this is our fourth and final uh, degree program that we're offering. And if you wanna now skip ahead, um, past degree programs. And I think there may be, uh, yeah, we'll stop here. So I mentioned about the study abroad. Um, there are two study abroad opportunities. This first one in Genoa is with Dr. Longo and he's in the upper picture with the navy blue t-shirt and sunglasses on in the middle. Um, Genoa, Italy is his home and the course starts in LA and finishes up in Italy. Um, the students that are in scrubs there, he takes you into one of the hospitals in Genoa to learn a little bit about diseases of those that are aging. Um, and you're given weekends free that you can explore the city. Next slide. 
Uh, the other course that is also offered in Florence, Italy, uh, for some of these degree programs is looking at food culture, disease, and longevity. And we're going to have an on-campus version of this course that we hope to offer in fall and or spring to really look truly deeply at the role of food in each of our cultures and the culture of people that we serve and really understand the value of food and the value of um, family meal time and um, a little bit of the history of why we um, have adopted the food practices that we have. Because any of us that work in nutrition and dietetics, we need to be able to serve those that are in our work setting. We need to understand their diet. We need to understand their nutrition beliefs. We need to understand their culture, their religion, um, and really build that into what we do as clinicians and providers. Next slide. Uh, our application deadline for these three new degrees, um, the MA, FMD <laughs> that are listed there, uh, October 15th for a January start date and March 15th for fall of next year, 2022. For our coordinated program, right now we only have once a year that we're accepting students. Um, in the future, we may try to get permission from Ascend to do it more than once a year, but right now our deadline for applications is January 15, and that's a start date of the third week of August, so always a fall start date for that particular program. More information on how to apply you can find at jero.usc.edu. Um, is, is there one more slide? Uh, and thank you for joining. So we'll come back to this. I want to, Stephen, just pull down the PowerPoint and I want to introduce Joy um, and give Joy a minute, uh, a little bit of time to talk. So Joy Zhang was in our cohort three, I believe, um, uh, which was probably graduation 2018. And um, Joy was a joy uh, to have in the program. And um, I, I would like, she's still here in the US. Uh, she will tell you about her road to becoming a dietitian and what she's doing now. And um, share with them where home is for you, Joy. And when we get to Q&A, you can ask Joy questions if you have them more specific to her. You can ask me questions or Stephen questions if it's more program application questions. So welcome, Joy. Thank you so much for making time. Thank you for inviting me, Dr. Kreiser. Oh, hi, everyone. Um, my name is Joy. Uh, my Yi. As Dr. Kreiser said, I graduated from uh, USC in 2018, and I am in cohort three. Good memory here. <laughs> so I actually um, started my uh, education in US in 2011, majoring in chemical engineering in University of Pittsburgh. Um, but when I was in the second year of my college, I had some great volunteer experience to work with the dietetic interns in the U UPMC, the University of Pittsburgh Medical Center as a volunteer. Um, at that time, it was lucky that I got to help a registered dietitian. So in, in that, that experience bring me interest and found, I found my passion uh, in, in food and nutrition and I realized um, how all of this research and evidence um, based research can actually benefit people. Um, chemical engineer was very fun um, and uh, very actually a little bit complicated um, degree to learn so um, I worked pretty hard to manage to finish the degree, but because of my personal interest, I continue to volunteer um, in the nutrition field. Um, and I also volunteer um, in some local uh, high school as well. 
Um, so after I graduated with my um, bachelor's degree, I found I really want to do something that I want to contribute my passionate and my future in. And that's why I started to look for the different programs and uh, start applying for the master degrees in nutrition and dietetics. Um, so I searched for all the accredited programs in the US and um, started to apply for that. And very luckily I got accepted to this program. Uh, we, uh, in our cohort, we only have 15 students, including me, I believe. There was four uh, classmates who were uh, remote and then 11 students um, on campus. We literally become very great friends because we stay every day together. Um, we had the same classes. We went to the same trip. We went to Italy. Oh, it reminds me so much of Italy when Dr. Kreiser tried, was introducing the experiences and the programs offered with Dr. Nongo. It was such a great experience. So we got to uh, spend our time to listen to all the speakers, um, very famous speakers um, that Dr. Nongo had connections and bring to the program. Um, and then most of us uh, stay another couple of weeks in, in, in Europe. So it was an excellent experience to know a little bit more about um, the Europe hospitals and the, um, the, of, uh, the fasting programs that Dr. Nongo was promoting. And then and it was also a great opportunity that bring all the classmates together. We become more bonded after the program. Um, and in the program, because all across uh, cross setting, as Dr. Kreiser said, was very well set. Every uh, class was like one by one. So um, as a student without a nutrition background from bachelor, I don't find much difficulties to really learn those classes, um, but I did spend actual time on doing that because um, as, as Dr. Kreiser mentioned, there are some pre-requested classes. Uh, even though my bachelor degrees was in engineering, um, I still had to spend the whole summer um, I've completed like several classes to be able to officially admitted to the program, but it was all worth it. And then the first year of our uh, program was all about study, study all the, all the info, um, all the MNTs you need to know. And uh, we had the wonderful professors from different fields that was um, especially designed for this program. And later starting the second year, um, we started our internship rotating in different settings, including schools, communities, and uh, hospitals, outpatients, inpatients, depends on your personal interest after you talk to our dear co-ordinator, Jenny. Um, and then Dr. Kreiser and Jenny are very involved in this program. So basically, if you have any questions, you can always reach for, for help from them because I was the one benefit a lot from the after class times. Um, what else? Uh, also, because Jimmy, the co-ordinator and Dr. Kreiser um, are all registered dietitians, they know this field very well. So they have different connections. I don't know how, but they bring the best uh, speakers and uh, um, and people in the field, the good dietitians and our alumni from the past who do who are doing very well in um, as a dietitian into our programs. So in the throughout the programs, we are not only getting trained for how to become an RDN in the future and how to successfully pass the exam. We also learn um, how you can get connected to the to the dietitians field and and how to discover your own interest in the field. Because as Dr. Kreiser mentioned, this field is 
uh, from a very um, long lifespan from even before the pregnancy to seniors. Um, so you, you got a lot of chance to discover which populations you want to work in, what kind of settings you want to work in as a dietitian. Um, and we, uh, we went to conference fancy together as a whole group and we uh, doing our grocery tours if you are interested in and we got the chance to shadow in the best uh, best uh, hospitals the uh, the CHLA um, thanks doc thanks to Dr. Kreiser and it was very great experiences for me and for my future career development and so Can you talk a little bit about your what you hello Sorry, can you talk a little bit about what you did once you graduated and what you're doing now? Uh, yeah, sure. Uh, so that was basically about what, what's going on with the program. And after I graduated in two, uh, 2018, um, I started to look for jobs and I, uh, I, I, I was very lucky got two job offers um, after applying. And then one was um, a functional medication uh, dietitian in downtown LA. And the other is a consultant uh, job uh, in the greater Los Angeles area and working in the uh, skilled nursing facilities and working with seniors. Um, I don't know if Dr. Kresser remember, I said I become very interesting become a dietitian because my families had a chronic disease, the diabetics. Um, so even though functional medication was so much fun and uh, attractive, but I decided to become a consultant in the nursing facilities because I want to get more opportunities to build up my clinic uh, judgment and experiences working with seniors. It's definitely a challenge and a great opportunities because you got to got a chance to see a lot of patients and in a regular basis. And um, because my um, because I need my um, sponsorships, I continue in my in my in my positions um, for the last two years. And I really like my job. I got uh, great job enrichments. I later helped to train some interns um, from LA uh, programs. And it was very rewarding. I didn't expect I could really teaching uh, uh, other people in our field, but it, it was very great experiences. I, um, and Recently, uh, because I'm moving up to uh, San Francisco next month, so I stopped uh, to work with, for, for the previous companies. And then for now, I'm doing my own pri uh, private practice website. So I'm trying to build up some um, private practice experiences and my own thing on the side um, because I. I feel it's um, I got some experiences and it's time to um, develop develop like um, a career based on that. So yeah, that's basically what I did and what I'm planning to do. Great, thank you so much. You you I didn't pay Joy to say all those wonderful things. Thank you for all of your compliments. Um, I, I'm glad you had such a great experience. Um, Kiara, do you want to um, start us in on questions now? Yes, of course. Thanks so much, Dr. Prather and May Steven, and of course Joy. Thanks so much to give us an overview of programs about nutrition in U.S. Learning Data School of Gentology. And I noticed that audience already have some questions in room chart, let's take them. And the first one from Peter, uh, the 11 prerequisite course, what are they? I mean, uh, I think he means the master of uh, house buying. Uh, yes, new, the new, coordinated nutrition. program, yeah. Yes. And, um, it's, um, I don't know, Stephen, if you have access to that, if you can pull it up. Um, and and just to answer that question, um, because, uh, because the coordinated program is accredited 
through the Accreditation Council for Education and Nutrition and Dietetics, there's so many things that we need to do to meet the accreditation. It really is no different from medical school or nursing school or any other program. And um, there are competencies that students need to meet as part of that program. And by us requiring you to complete the prerequisites prior to starting the program, it is a way that we can have the degree program be less units. 44 units is still a lot of units. 38 units is still a lot of units. Um, and so by allowing you to do those prereqs prior to starting the program, it prepares you for what you need to know once the program begins. Um, Biochemistry is such a key class uh, to take in that it really helps you to understand what's going on in the body in terms of nutrients. And you'll come back to that when you do your macronutrient, micronutrient class. So yes, it is a bit of a long list, um, but we're following the requirements per accreditation. And you can find that list on our website. We do not require that those prerequisites be completed in any particular place. We do require a minimum number of units. And for a few of the classes, they need to be within the last 10 years. So, um, you know, we're happy to talk to you more about that if you have additional questions. Thanks so much, Doctor. And so, Peter, please go to our official website to locate more specific details information. Thank you. And next question from Wei Cheng. Hi, Professor. I want to apply for the MS Lifespan Nutrition and Dietetics. That's great. But I didn't take the course basic health and nutrition. I only have to take the other three courses. Do I still have chances to be admitted for the program? Well, uh, uh, yeah, yes, it depends on when you're applying. If you're applying to begin in three weeks, um, I, I don't know that you'll be able to find a course. The, the course basic human nutrition, um, you're going to find a basic human nutrition at many uh, community colleges in the U.S., at um, state colleges. Um, we do offer it at USC. It is an undergrad class. It's JARO 411 that I teach, um, and that course could be completed. I did have one uh, student who will start the program in the fall that took that course with me over the summer. Um, that was the only course that he had remaining to take, but that course just ended um, last week and because uh, we're getting ready to start our fall semester. Um, but that course can be taken anywhere as long as it's at least two units on the semester uh, system of college. Okay, thank you so much, doctor. So if the student to be admitted by our program, I mean the uh, MS L and D, and if he or she wants to study the courses, the practice courses with us, she can take the course with you, right? Yes. Okay, that's great. That's great news to our audiences mm -hmm. and applicants. <laughs> okay, the next questions. Hi all, if I don't have background in related fields, how long would be usually mm -hmm. take to take the prerequisite classes in other colleges before I could apply for the program? <laughs> I love that question and we can go back to Joy, but let me just make one comment. We had a student and you know this student, Joy Elliott Kwan, um, so Elliot was working in media advertisement in New York prior to applying to the program, and she had an undergrad degree in a, in a humanities area, so she really had no science, and she finished all 11 prerequisites in a year, and she was concurrently enrolled in three or four different universities at the same time for different courses, but she was, and she got a and all of them and she got it done in a year um, so the answer to that question is it's a matter of how much time you have and um, you know if you can find all the classes that are needed but we also will look at your transcripts and that is where Stephen can help out we'll look at what you've already completed joy were there classes that you had taken with your engineering degree that we counted 
Uh, yeah, because I had, uh, I think I was only need to take an actual four classes. Mm. Um, to so make... four out of the 11. Yeah, so uh, because when I was in chemical engineering, I took all the biology and the organic chemistry stuff. So that was part of the pre-requested. So, mm -hmm. but I did also registered under uh, two different schools. Yeah. Um, for yeah. for meant, uh, for fulfill mm -hmm. all the requirements, but it's um, doable. It takes time and yeah. hard work, but it's doable. So, if any of you are currently enrolled in a bachelor's degree, look at what units you have remaining for electives and. We've had students that do that also that decide as Joy did, maybe in your sophomore, junior year that you're thinking you wanna change your degree. You'll finish your degree in engineering, but you then wanna get into a master's degree. Um, use your prerequisite, use your elective units to take some of the classes so that it isn't extra classes. They count towards your degree you're finishing. That's a smart way to go about it. Thanks so much. Thanks. Thank you for the information. This is really useful for our applicant, I think. And the next question, uh, next question is from Peter. Hi, Professor. While student who has been registered as dietitian in China be qualifying to apply for the MSNS program. Yes, I. We would love to have you, Peter. Um, <laughs> definitely, we would take you. Yeah. And as I said earlier, the purpose of that degree is to not make you have to retake classes that you've already had when you were taking classes to prepare to be a dietitian. We want to take you a step higher. We want to build on not only what you know, but build on what you're seeing in practice. If you're working now as a dietitian, let's help you learn more um, that you can apply to your work. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Doctor. So the version of RD in China is also acceptable, right? Yes, yes. Mm, that's great. That's so great. <laughs> and the so next question from Wei Chang. Can graduates in the program MA in Food Service Management to take the RD exam? No. So the Masters of Arts in Food Service Management will, will qualify you to take the Certified Dietary Manager exam, the CDM. And really the difference with that degree versus the RDN, an RDN can plan special diets and instruct patients on special diets. As a CDM, you can talk with people about healthy eating and planning a balanced diet, but you can't do medical nutrition therapy. You can look at height weight. You can go to team meetings in these senior communities where all of the clinicians talk about how patients are doing, and you can talk about how they're doing with their diet, how their appetite has been. You can document in their medical record, but you can't plan diets or do diet um, instruction. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you. So there are two different passes. So our audiences, but to make sure which one you prefer to. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, it's so next question from, from Peter to our potential audience. Hi, Professor, thanks for the great introduction. Am I right that there is only program that does, doesn't have any practice courses? I mean- the Yes, is the MA. Yes, the Masters of Arts. And for, I mean, as for the Masters of Science and Nutritional Science, there are not prerequisites. There is a requirement that you have a degree in nutrition and dietetics, or you're working as a dietitian. Um, in a way, that's a prerequisite, but it's not a prereq course. So yes, only the MA has no prerequisites coming into the program. Mm, thank you, doctor. And next question is for Joy. Hi, Zhang Yi. 
with your undergraduate degree is chemical engineering, which met all the 11 prerequisite courses. If, if not, how did you overcome the hurdle? I think Joy already answered the question. So yeah, we kind of answered to... that. Um, but Joy, <laughs> let me ask you though, did you know that you were gonna go to nutrition and did you do some of your electives, nutrition courses while you were still in, in Pennsylvania? I um actually not. I suggest mm -hmm. that's why it's very uh, smart if you can prepare earlier. Uh, so those courses that already met the pre-requested was actually a required program when I was an engineer. Um, and I think it's the basic science classes for all engineer students. And yeah. And I actually like officially decided to pursue a master's degree in nutrition at the very end of my bachelor's years. Mm -hmm. um, and in, yeah, but, but it's really not that hard to, uh, to finish all the, all the pre-requested courses because you, are, you got the chance to take from the online schools uh, which is also accredited and will be accepted by USC. And then you can actually take, take it from when you are in summer in China. And that's what I did. Um, uh, yeah, and I also, uh, I also went to like a summer school that was, um, that was accredited in China for public speaking. I'm not sure if this one is uh, still requested. Uh, but yeah, uh, when I think for, I think uh, to be honest, pre-requested was kind of the thing I tried a little bit. I used, a, I spent a little bit more time in researching um, because I was so nervous if I could uh, finish all the uh, pre-requested before the starting of the program. Um, I saw the question, someone was asking if there is a conditional offer. I get a conditional offer that is to request me to finish all the pre-requested. So I was very excited. I got the offer and then um, I was nervous if I could finish all the but they need But they need to be completed prior to the first day of class. So you mm -hmm. can't be concurrently enrolled in a prereq while you're starting the program. So Joy is right. She she got an offer, but she needed to finish those classes. It gave us the ability to not accept her had she not completed the prerequisites. Yeah, <laughs> but she did. Thanks so much, Dr. and Joy, for sharing the information. And the next question is from our audience named Laura. And Laura is interested in why our program choose Italy as the internship destination, because their food is healthy. Hmm. Um, actually, Italy, um, because Dr. Longo is from Genoa, Italy, and that is his course, the Gero 498. Um, but Yes, Italy is one of the countries that are located in the blue zones. And if you've not ever read about the blue zones, you may want to look into that. And these are areas of the world where um, there are pockets of individuals that are, have lived, uh, a concentration of individuals that have lived beyond 100 years old. And the blue zones really looks at their diet, looks at their lifestyle. Um, the Mediterranean diet is also Italy and other areas um, kind of surrounding Italy and a lot of research done on the benefits of the Mediterranean diet in terms of longevity. Hmm. Thanks so much, doctor. Uh, next question is from Xi Chen. And hi, Professor, at the beginning of your mention about the both accredited program and coordinated program of MSN. HL. I'm a bit confused about these two programs of the same major and how to apply if they have different requirements. Mm -hmm. So as I said at the beginning, there are two programs that, that look almost identical other than the number of internship hours that are required. And we right now with our 
accredited program, which is the coordinated program. So those are the same, same program, the MS NHL. Um, with that program, we are only approved to take 24 students per year. Uh, when Joy was with us, we were at 15. We've gone up over time. Um, we are really limited with how many we can accept. This last year, we had 75 students apply for 24 spots. And we're really wanting to offer more opportunities for those that don't need to do the accredited program, but need the degree and need the courses that are offered and need the experience and it's why the companion program has fewer hours of internship. You aren't eligible to sit for the US RDN exam, but if your thought is that you will go back home to, to wherever your home country is, you may not need to do those additional hours of internship and you can take the RD exam in your home country. You don't need to take it in the US. So that was the reason for having those two parallel programs. So in response, um, it really depends on where you see yourself working once you graduate. And if you feel that you're gonna go back home, um, then you don't need to do the extra units of the accredited program. It, it isn't required. Thank you so much. And next question is for Joy, I think. Uh, what audience is not very good at the English speaking or uh, listening? And uh, the student the student audience would like to know the uh, nutrition career development in China. So Joy, would you mind to answer the question in Chinese? <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, sure. Um, 我知道的中国就业的情况其实比较 比较少，但是我的确有朋友在疫情期间有一些人就是决定回国发展啊，因为一些自己的情况和家庭的原因，他们也找到了薪水很好的工作，而且就像我们很多人啊都在强调，现在国就是其实中国在大力发展大健康事
1,200 hours, although that's being changed and we've changed, we're now 1,000 hours of internship, no more 1,200, which is good. Um, um, both of those need to be completed, the didactic component, the courses, as well as the 1,000 hours. Um, and as a program director, I then have the authority to issue the documentation that allows the person to sit for the RDN exam. Um, and so th that really are your, is your options, either an undergraduate bachelor's degree and then applying for an internship that's through the Ascend or doing what we do, we combine all of it together. We do the courses and the internship are all part of the same program. It's not two separate programs. Then you can sit for the RDN exam. Um, uh, one of Joy's good friends that did the program the same year as she did, that was with us last week, uh, Xu Yi, um, she is back home in China and working with seniors, Joy. Um, and uh, she was telling us last week that if you completed a master's degree in nutrition and dietetics or maybe a bachelor's degree in nutrition and dietetics that you can return to china take the rdn exam and do internship hours in china it doesn't have to be in the us and the other thing i will say is that our accredited program does not allow us to let students go abroad and do all thousand hours. Um, right now for our program, all thousand hours need to be in the United States. We're, we're not approved for some international hours. Uh, we can seek that out in the future, but right now we're not approved for that. And you won't find any programs. The Accreditation Council only allows 300 hours to be outside of the US if it's approved in advance. Hopefully that answered that question. Yes, it's helpful. I think it's, it's really helpful to our audience to know specific requirements. And the next question is from, uh, the next answer is, the next, is from Wei Chang. Thank you, Professor, for the prerequisites because most, most no students in China can be qualified for all the four prerequisites. Oh, I think um, our audience says that, that the, you know, the Chinese students is, is have difficult to take uh, the other courses from the other university during their undergraduate studies. So do you think if they got admitted by our program uh, and uh, they want to, they don't have the prerequisite courses and they want to study in our department, do you have any suggestion about this and how to operate this? Um, Joy, do you have an idea, like how did you manage once you finished your degree in, in Pittsburgh, how, what did you do that allowed you to be able to do the prerequisites and was it a gap year? Did, did you take a year between your bachelor's degree and starting our program while you were doing prereqs? Oh, hi. Um, I, I think I, I can answer this question. Uh, so. As Doctor mentioned, that um, the pre-requested uh, pre courses are as not as it's from a accredited program. So there are some online college that offered this uh, pre-requested courses. So you can just enroll in those programs. You don't need to actually need to physically be on the on in, in US to take the programs. The only thing you need to overcome is just the time difference. <laughs> and so, you so did you so did you do some of your prereqs from China? Uh, not from China, from uh, from uh, most of them are from US uh, US colleges, but it's totally online. So you can just do it virtually. And I believe it becomes even easier due to COVID, right? Most of the schools offer the virtual courses right now. Mm -hmm. So if you take some time to, um, to do the research, you, you are going to find like there are many schools that offer these classes. Because it's not like very, um, very masters or advanced classes that was requested. It's mm -hmm. basically some basic sciences that help you to 
get into this program smoother. For example, since we had uh, we had some saying medical medical nutrition uh, um, classes that require of of very solid science background for from organic chemistry from biology from food science if you don't have those experiences you need to take more times to understand the materials later on so it's actually a way that the program was set to help you to really get into this program not like some like barriers to stop you from applying Right, right. And the other thing that I also would say is that um, be careful where you take those prereqs. We accept online programs, but from accredited universities, I know there are people out there that would be happy to take your money and may not ever give you a transcript showing that you finished the class. So make sure if you're doing those prerequisites that you're doing it from a legitimate organization and, and that they're accredited, that the college is accredited um, would be good for your protection. Thanks so much. This is really a good suggestion and a kind of reminder. It should be from the credited university. Yeah. Okay. The next question is from uh, KN. And the question is for Joy in Chinese. Uh, 刚才听学姐的意思是会在网站上做些事情,是不是有关这个营养学专业的方面的咨询,然后有没有相关的网址可以提供出来? Oh, hello. Hey, <laughs> um, uh, yeah, I, I was mentioning I'm trying to build up my own website and starting doing some private practice. Um, for now, I'm st still in the very early stage of like doing some UI stuff. Um, but yeah, I'm trying to uh, accept some clients from the website in the future and also posting some of my experiences, like how do I do the career transferring and how, how do I get, the, get into the program? That's a good question. Thank you. Um, I can actually leave my WeChat if you, you have questions about this later. Um, yeah. <laughs> okay, thanks so much, Joy. If you could share your WeChat, that's this. I, I think that is really wonderful. <laughs> Yeah, I would love to. Thank you. Okay, the next question is from uh, Hisashi. Uh, I heard that UIC has a pre-master's program. Can I apply to your program through the pre-master's program? Um, I can answer uh, that one. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Steven. <laughs> Yes, yes, you can apply through OIS. What you do is you can either, um, if your English test scores aren't that uh, sufficient to feel like you can complete the master's program right away, you can go directly to the international school, apply to the pre-master's program, complete all the English courses that would be required of you, and then um, come to complete the master's degree within our school. Mm, thanks so much. Uh, Steven, and uh, please know that not all the courses, not all the majors are, so, uh, can apply through pre-master program. And if you want to know the specific list, you can go to our official website. Thank you. And the next question is from Laura. And thank you. Could you please share the average income for CDM and R&D? Yeah, you know, it's uh, the CDM, the average income is maybe three to four thousand dollars a year less than what the in what the salary is for an RDN. And, and I think a lot of that is because you're in a management position and you're supervising employees and you're overseeing a budget. So um, the CDM is a, can be a well-paid job. Um, uh, you know, depending on where you end up working. Um, the, the salary for dietitians, I'm told, and this is Los Angeles salaries is, um, and I maybe Joy, if you have other things that you've heard, I've been told it's anywhere from 65,000 to 75,000 a year um, for a salary. I don't know if that's ballpark. It's gonna vary depending on 
what kind of work you're doing if you're working um you know what what area you're working joy have you heard do you have any ideas oh yeah um uh, uh, i think the best way if you want as dr kreiser mentioned it really depends where you are working because besides of money there are more things to consider like how is the team working some um some sites are more tight advanced so it's easier for our young artists to work with and some facilities might be um more traditional so it takes more energy and times to manage even though the salary is better but <laughs> not so much as mm -hmm. for work-life balance um i would suggest that uh, if you are interested in the salary go to the web search website linkedin ed indeed like those websites just look for dietitian and you can look for how, yeah. how, how what how, they're how offering they, yeah. yeah so that that's a better way to know like mm -hmm. the real-time salary offering and mm -hmm. it really depends on the area as well for example lost car is paying a little bit better and some like other other states might be paying lower than LA. So I would suggest you to take a look on that. Thank you so much, Dr. and uh, Joy. And we also got many questions from other media platforms. And the because of the limited time, I will choose the last two questions from the platforms and to uh, share with our audiences. And so, uh, one question is, uh, we all know the sugar is really harmful to cancer people, but the people with cancer are always low on sugar. So would you give some suggestion on how to fix these questions from the nutrition side? Oh, <laughs> um, I think that's a bigger question than, than a quick little answer. Um, uh, in terms of sugar, yes, cancer cells love sugar. And uh, if you understand the fasting mimicking diet that Dr. Longo has studied his whole career and has developed and the role of diet in cancer treatment, um, his protocol is to basically do a, a, a fasting prior to chemotherapy as a way of not giving cells sugar of starving those cells so that when those chemicals hit the body there those cells those cancer cells are much more weak um, and don't survive the chemotherapy um, um, that in terms of cancer in terms of just disease in the u.s um, it's the high fructose corn syrup that we're seeing in every possible food that I'm seeing it in kids that are in my obesity program that I direct where we have children that are 10 years old and are being diagnosed with non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. They have so much fat in their liver similar to what somebody who is an alcoholic and, and drinks excessively is having in their liver. So it isn't just the sugar that we think of, the white sugar that you mix in your tea, the, the sugar that really is causing a lot of harm is the high fructose corn syrup, which is a, a man-made sugar um, that is processed by the body very differently. So if you want to learn more, you can do any of our programs and you will be able to talk to people about the, the downside of high fructose corn syrup and how the body's metabolism is different for that sugar um, compared to table sugar. Thanks so much, doctor. And the last question from one audience is from Media Platform. It is great to know our, audience, our students in the program could go to Italy to have the internship, but due to pandemic, the COVID-19, can students do go to abroad? You know, we, Dr. Longo is, has been so sad that he's not taken students the last two years because of COVID. Um, I'm sure you all are just as frustrated as we are here with um, the fact that this just continues on. Um, I want it to be done. I want to be back to the way life used to be. We're hopeful the next summer students will return to Italy. I'm hopeful. The class was offered online, so students actually had Dr. Longo for that class in a classroom. So it um, wasn't quite the same as being there live. Yeah. 
Thank you, Doctor. And uh, I also noticed that uh, the message from Peter in our Zoom, Zoom, Zoom. And uh, Peter says, thanks, Professor, for your advice with regarding the prerequisite courses. But if you understand the situation in China, it will be hard for complete or prerequisite courses in China. So you have, do you have any suggestion mm. of how to deal with it? I know we have many suggestions on this. So Professor, do you have any supplemental information would you like to provide to Peter? Thank you. Um, I would look to, to, to you, Kiara, and I'd look to Joy mm -hmm. also with ideas. I have been to China. I have not lived for any period in China. Mm -hmm. um, I, I don't know how to advise you. I'm not an expert at visas in terms of doing a like a pre-masters or doing a post-baccalaureate degree. I know people in the in other times do what's called a post-baccalaureate degree where you do additional studies beyond what your bachelor's degree is in. Um, do you have thoughts, Joy, or anyone else? Yeah, Peter, you can email me directly and we can also discuss and go over what transcripts you already have, what may, what classes you've already completed that may fulfill our prerequisites. And I also have a running list of some of our courses that are offered fully online at local community colleges here in the Los Angeles and California area. Yes, Stephen, I think it's a fully online university or colleges. The list, I think it's really, it will, it will be really helpful. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay. okay. I would like to add something on. I was actually mm -hmm. completed all my left uh, pre-requested courses while I was in China. So I'm not sure how is the difficulties that Peter mentioned that mm -hmm. in China, if you can uh, kind of specify. Mm -hmm. So I think Peter means, you know, in China, if you study in, one university and you can go another one to take some courses so as I'm, right. i mean this is the hurdle yes it's not like here where i could just go tomorrow and register at a college because i want to take music courses um even though i already have a doctorate degree i could go take those music courses you can't do that yes. in china yeah yes i, I yes, understand correct. i think what joy is saying is that she reached out and it doesn't have to be the US, it could be any country. If you can find a university outside of China that's offering any of those prerequisites that they're a legitimate school, they're gonna give you a transcript and it's gonna be equivalent to a semester long course, the minimum units that we require. Um, all we need is a transcript showing that you took biochemistry and you took introductory nutrition and you took physiology. Um, it could be UK, it could be Australia, it could be US. Um, and if they're online and you don't mind getting up at odd hours to do courses live if live is required, yeah. Yeah, thank you, Professor. I noticed that you just mentioned that if students want to take courses, the correct one uh, in our department, and they could study with us during the summer semester. And would you mind to specific how can they take the courses in our department before the master program? Who were you asking that question of, Kiara? Um, it's me. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> yeah, I, I think the challenge that you would run into if you did just the summer before and if you had four prerequisites, um, I don't know that USC will offer physiology, biochemistry. I told you that I teach the introductory nutrition, so that one would be okay. I'm trying to think, Stephen, what was the fourth prereq? Um, physiology. Basic what? Basic human nutrition. Mm, and, yes. and, and microbiology, was that the fourth one? Yes. Yeah. So I don't know that USC teaches those during the summer, but we don't require you to take them at USC. Um, you can take them at another community college or college in the US, um, you know, as long as you apply and you get in. I think the biggest risk for colleges here in the US that we see with students is if you're not a full-time nutrition student, 
They may not let you into that nutrition class. You may be on the wait list, but um, I've known students that go the first day of class and try to get in. <laughs> um, uh, so there's ways around it. But as I used Elliot Kwan as an example, she found four or five. When she applied, I think she had 10 transcripts from not only her bachelor's degree, but other places where she had taken the prerequisites. And as long as she could manage that with her own schedule, many of them were online. Um, as long as we had a transcript and we had a grade, um, it's fine. Thanks yeah. so much, Professor. So applicants with all the project courses before the master program is well be highly suggested. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, thanks so much. And uh, if there are anything else you would like to add before we conclude, maybe give some words to our audiences and potential applicants. Thank um, you. And I'll, I'm going to let Joy have the last word. I'll say one thing and then Joy, I'll turn it to you. Um, we, this is a big investment and a big commitment and Stephen is available and others that work with Stephen, um, you met May, May is available. We want it to be a win-win. So if you need more time to talk to someone, you want to think about it, um, um, we would love to have you, but I, I want you to be sure that this is what you want to do. And it's why we do these presentations to really um, give you our experience. I, I tell students, I'm, I am not selling a program. I will mentor you, I will help you, but please make sure that this is the right place for you and this is really what you want to do, right, May? May you have mute. Yes, definitely, yes, yeah. And like uh, Dr. Price has said, you could take the prerequisites online and that helps you. You don't need to come to the United States at a set this time, and then you prepare all prerequisites, and then you apply to the program. You could also apply to the PM program, pay master program through them. You could get your English skill in uh, Polish, and then you could come to our program. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right, Joy, you get the last word. What's your parting words and your advice? <laughs> um, um, my advice is that uh, by going to, by applying to the program, you need to know that all the applicants are people who really love doing nutrition um, because it's not like a field that people go in, just like many people will go for engineer or software engineers because it, you, you will get a very high salaries or you are going doctors because um, of the <laughs> Uh, social status. You need to be very passionate and you need to make effort, but you will make very good friends and you will get all the networks you need. And I'm very enjoy what I'm doing now. Um, and I, I think choosing a career is not like a one-time thing. You always get a chance to change. Um, so don't be like very overwhelmed if you are going to the wrong field, but you need to do your research and do a volunteer in the hospital to see if you like it and uh, email or text some dietitians in the US to see how do they feel about working in the field. Um, and you will find your own voice after your research. It's not like someone else telling you this is a great uh, career and we would love you to come in. I think it's, um, it's a thing that you need to decide for your future. And I, I hope you will enjoy studying nutrition and working as a, uh, as a dietitian as I do right now. So that's my last word. <laughs> Yeah, I think you said at the beginning that you had volunteered when you were working on your bachelor's degree. So that is advice I would give too, is find somebody you can shadow or talk to or observe um, and see if it really is what you want to do. Yeah. Thank you, Kiara. Thanks, team. <laughs> Thanks so much, Dr. Cruiser. And thanks, Stephen. Of course, Joy. And I think they are all golden rules. Fantastic. Thanks so much. So much useful information. And uh, 
Okay, dear audiences, if you have any other questions or further inquiries, please go to contact our professors, our alumni, and VP slides and our Zoom chart to just to show the content information. And you could also go to our official website and locate more information specifically.